You know what to do. Hey! Kill them all. Coming from the disaster that is Bioware's Anthem, I started thinking to myself, well damn, the competition sure set the bar very low. Now UB Massive have every chance in the world to win over that audience. So having played Division 1 already, I bought the Ultimate Edition, headed into the game early, and I was absolutely stunned. Where initially I was expecting to only recommend this game with a lot of reservations in the spirit of, if you like the first game, you'll get a kick out of this one. After completing the campaign, I am confident to recommend this game to anyone who is a fan of looting games, period. Bioware had every chance to learn from mistakes of Bungie and Ubisoft and they did nothing of that sort. Ubisoft themselves meanwhile sure did. The Division 2 is a flat out improvement in pretty much every aspect I could ask for. And even based on its own merit, it is simply a standout looter shooter. It's a phenomenal game that, even if you don't care about the Dark Zone, even if you don't care about organized PvP, and even if you don't have time to grind the end game to run the hardest of hard content on offer, this game is absolutely worth your money. And more importantly, your time. And I know that this is a very bold statement. To make sure I don't sit here rambling for 20 minutes, I decided to go for a top 3 list that helps me stay organized while I'm going to be doing my best to tell you why this game is fucking awesome. Oh, and um, introduce yourself to the locals while you're at it. It'll comfort them to know there's a new sheriff in town. Number one on our list, The Division 2 absolutely respects your time. Remember when Bungie had turned Destiny 1 into a really good game towards the end of its lifespan, but then Destiny 2 came around and everyone like, wait, what the hell? Where's all the good stuff you added to the first game? While not every single game mode is currently present in The Division 2, all of the improvements to their overarching reward structure are still there. There is literally no wrong way of playing The Division 2. Massive knows that it's 2019 and we're all busy people, so we want to to get our gaming fix quickly and we want to get it the way we want. So whether you decide to go out and do main missions, clear control points, chase down dynamic events or literally just run down the street to see what happens on your way going from A to B, you are rewarded for everything you do and your efforts will always be met with a suitable amount of rewards. Let's get an example in here so you understand what I'm talking about. Let's say you look at your map to figure out what you want to do. What is your motivation to go out and clear a control point? Well, for one, control points can act as fast travel locations that help you traversing the map more effectively, especially for the time-sensitive dynamic events. That alone is already a really good reason to try and clear as many of them as possible. But that's obviously not it. Every time you clear a control point, you get access to their supply room. And every supply room gives you not only crafting materials, but also a bunch of new gear. Furthermore, you can use your materials to supply the control point once you have taken control of it, and in turn, the control point officer is going to give you a buff that allows you to see caches and other items in the world more easily by giving them an orange outline. And if you donate enough resources, you will be awarded with a bounty intel leading you to a high value target that grants you a buttload of XP and even more gear. Not to mention that donating in itself already gives you XP. But it's not like you have to do all the heavy lifting yourself, because by clearing all of these control points, you are opening up supply routes that the NPCs will take advantage of automatically. They are literally self-sustaining at this point. That means that you can swoop in on a control point to add the last bit of resources that they need to get a bounty intel almost for free. The way all of these systems interact with each other and the way they all become more efficient and self-sustaining in response to you clearing more of them is absolutely genius. Whenever you go to a new zone, you will come across a lot of bad guys that honestly just annoy you while you are trying to go from A to B. But by clearing these control points, you allow the civilians to fight back on their own. You will see more friendly NPCs patrolling the street, fighting enemy factions that are roaming around so you don't have to do it on your own. And if you are feeling particularly salty, you can literally slap resources out of an enemy convoy and use them for your own control points to get access to all of the benefits I have just talked about. That's just to illustrate how all of the game systems and reward structures are interconnected. You think you are only doing a single activity, but in the process, you are benefiting many more activities in the game. And all of these other things then too grant you more rewards. And even mundane things like going out to collect shape tech has been solved very smartly. Smartly. Because yes, most of the time there's literally not a single enemy around any of these shade tag caches. But to make sure that your trip is worth the time, the devs have put a lot of resource nodes along the way. That means that you don't have to blindly roam 
around the world to find resources, you know that you will get some while you are on your way to get the Shade Tech Cache. And obviously, you want to have these because you need them to unlock more abilities and perks. But it gets even better because while you are doing all of these things, you are also automatically making progress on your zone specific projects that then too give you more XP and more blueprints to make weapons and gear. By picking up a single Shade Tech Cache, you are progressing towards your own power to unlock more abilities and perks, you are progressing towards the collection of resources that you get along the way, and you are progressing towards projects that grant you blueprints to use the resources that you just gathered. And on top of that, many of these Shade Tech locations have gear caches laying around them, so you even have a good shot for upgrading your gear in the most immediate way possible. I know that I'm really stretching this first point here, but man, I am absolutely astonished how, rather than extending the grind to make us put in more flat game time for a single reward, Massive have decided to allow us to do whatever the hell we want and still get a constant stream of rewards that assist our progression. And that is absolutely commendable. But if you guys can take some pressure off of us, we are already doing what we can. Are you? Because outside those walls, it's perdition. We let our guard down just for a second and it's over. All of this, whatever you're doing out there, we're not feeling it in here. And for number two on our list, let's talk about the campaign. And when I say campaign, I will be so free and include the side missions as well, because listen to me, if I didn't know any better, I would have believed that the side missions were literally just main missions. You might remember how, in the first game, what constituted as a side mission was as bland of a mission as it gets. Go to that location, click some button, destroy a few waves of enemies, and call it a day. And really, the only reason you even bothered with them was to get specific resources to upgrade your base of operations. It was the worst kind of grind imaginable. Imaginable. So, essentially like missions and anthem. But not this time, my friends. Every single mission in The Division 2 has a unique narrative, unique location, and all of them are multi-staged. They are quite literally light versions of main missions. And even calling it that is almost not giving them enough credit. Every single one of them could hold up as a main mission. And then the actual main missions are that, but cranked up to 11. Within a main mission, you will not only be given a narrative as polite window dressing. You will know why you are there and what you are doing. Because unlike the first game where they had a really cool theme with the green poison and stuff but they never really took advantage of it, but now they have. Okay, but let's start with the side missions. The way you unlock side missions is by following the campaign. And the campaign primarily is going to guide you towards the settlements in the game which essentially serve as player hubs. Once you had a briefing with whoever is running the place you will get access to that location specific intel unlocking the side missions. But you can also talk to civilians to see if they have anything to do for you. And the cool thing here is that the game knows that standard in front of an NPC that does a little more than wiggling around while talking is not very fun. So whenever you start a side mission, you will get a recap of what that civilian asks you to do via comms. And said comms will continue to punch your way through the missions. And here's where it gets really cool. Because much like in a main mission, you never spend a lot of time in the same spot. Every single mission is multi-stage in nature, giving you multiple objectives, varying locations, and different arenas to fight in. But all of that is separate from all the open world activities, which once you've spent enough time I'm in DC will feel very familiar to you. Every single side mission in this game is unique. They all have a story to tell you and they all matter to your overall story arc. But they matter in a way where if you don't want to do them, it's not a big deal, but it definitely helps immerse you into the world. Now granted, we are playing Mr. I just accept every task coming my way, so the overall storytelling is definitely not Witcher level. However, the world building is absolutely amazing. You know how many such games you start wondering, why am I hunting wolves and collecting potatoes if I'm supposed to be the hero of my story? Well, the reason that you do the things you do without spoiling the story too much is because it's not all about establishing an infrastructure, which yes, you spend a lot of your time doing to make living in DC possible in the first place. But a lot of the story revolves around establishing trust to the government and by proxy you as a division agent. The city has fallen to ruin and many of the civilians have lost faith in the government as a controlling entity. So to show them that the government is capable of regaining control and to show that the government is run by real people who try to help out upstanding citizen, you as a representative are sent to take care of these problems and literally establish yourself as the new sheriff in town. You are the hero that the people can look up to. You give them the strength to live and the opportunity to fight for their lives. So while the story in itself gets a solid C plus or B minus from me, the world building comes in at a flat A. It is very 
easy for me to believe that would something like this happen in the real world, that's how people would react. And it's not about whether or not that is accurate. At the end of the day, it's just about telling a believable story. And you know, these days, we believe a lot of things that are not entirely accurate. Anyway, big shout out to UbiMaster for the amazing recreation of Washington DC, a set of awesome side missions that put many other games to shame, and phenomenal main missions that bring the Hollywood flair that I so love. Sounds like you've got company. And lastly on the list, number three, the open world. Listen, I know that this is a looting game, so you probably expected me to put the loot on this list as well. However, I feel like that should be more of an endgame specific discussion. Let me assure you that throughout my time playing the campaign, I was feeling very good about the loot I've gotten. You start feeling more powerful and more effective over time as you unlock more abilities and perks. Every upgrade you find also feels like a substantial upgrade, and the balance of player power scaling versus enemy power scaling has been done superbly. But the loot balance is really only being tested in the end game. And I haven't had a chance to dive deep into that just yet as I'm trying to make a purchase recommendation here and now based on the campaign alone. Because fuck yeah, it's that good. Now, I have already given you good reason to like the open world based on my points made at the start of the video, but there's obviously more to it. I don't want to completely remove your sense of wonder and discovery by explaining all the intricacies of how all the different progression systems interact with each other, but I want to highlight how amazing it feels to run around in DC and just do stuff. There are so many really cool different locations in this game, it's absolutely mad. And I know that a lot of the promo material made it look like the entire game was played in some kind of swamp because they really wanted that contrast going from New York in the winter to Washington DC in the summer, probably in an attempt to have people not call it the same game. But beyond that, this game has a lot of variety on offer when it comes to its locations. Where New York felt very samey very quickly, you get a lot of different vibes in DC depending on where you go, at what time of day, during what kind of weather. And the game has a habit of writing really cool stories by that. For example, the first time I came across a supply drop, I had no idea what the hell was going on. There were two factions already fighting for some of them as another box literally dropped from the sky right in front of my face. And they do go out of their way to try and loot them so that you can't. And after doing a few more of those, I learned that this is not something that necessarily happens all the time. Most of the airdrops I found after that have already been deployed and there were tons of enemies that I had to take out in order to access them. Another time again, I tried to capture control point, I was wondering why the hell I was having such a hard time with that one specifically. I learned after the fact that an enemy supply convoy had joined the fight for the control point as they tried to resupply it. So that's why I was dealing with so many more enemies than I was used to. And then again, I was calling in reinforcements for a takeover and my squad was being held up on their way by a random patrol, making me decide between trying to solo this whole thing or going back to try and help. Storms and fog and rain sometimes make it genuinely difficult to see or hear enemies, giving a lot of fights an entirely different dynamic. And considering that most of the main and side missions take place indoors, this is a really cool change of pace. The way the game opens up content over time makes it so that you never feel overwhelmed by choices. And it is also very easy to see that this is not a map full of question marks waiting to be turned into check marks. Events are dynamically happening all the time, and more often than not, the more of DC you unlock, you end end up having to make a choice. Whatever I felt like doing, I never came out of it thinking I wasted my time. And even things that at first seemed like they were going to be very mundane often turned into much more interesting situations than I initially expected. And if all that sounds like a love letter to the developers, that's because it kind of is. I started playing this game expecting mediocrity in the spirit of the first division on launch or Destiny 1 and 2 or much more recently Anthem. But what we ended up getting was a game that is simply amazing by so many different metrics. There are many more things I could have said and many more things I kind of want to say, but I think this is enough for today. Don't forget that no game is perfect and obviously bugs exist and problems occur, but considering its scale, Hell, even without considering that, it's surprising to see how few bugs I actually ran into. Yes, I shadow played every bug I ran into and in 25 hours of gameplay, I've only come across 4 bugs and 2 server crashes. And most of the bugs were of purely visual nature. Even if I stop playing right now without ever touching PvP or the end game, I feel like I already got my money's worth. Obviously that's purely subjective and naturally I am planning to keep playing. And as much as I am recommending this game unreservedly to anyone even remotely interested, 
it, I still suggest you go out and get other people's opinions as well, as only having a single source of information is rarely a good thing. But I'm gonna call it a day, so thank you everybody so much for watching, don't forget to drop me a like on your way out if you enjoyed this video, subscribe if you want to see more, and I hope to see you guys next time.